Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. Today we are going to talk about inputs, different type of inputs. So there are static types, we know them, we have already dealt with them, and there are dynamic inputs. And I want to show you what a dynamic input is. Let's first see exactly what a static input is. So we have a static, static inputs. The symbol is, hey, we know, if there is some sort of block, yeah, doesn't really matter which block, we have one input, yeah, that's the symbol. And whenever the input level reaches a certain trigger level, we will switch from one from 0 to 1, and another trigger level we will switch from, from uh, 1 to 0. Yeah. So this is, this is how this works. Yeah. So, we said yeah, there is an input xi yeah, and there is an interpreted input x here. Yeah. Then, if this xi is going up, whoop, yeah, here we have somewhere the, the logically one level, but where the the element is designed for, yeah. then we have somewhere here guaranteed levels, and down here we have also guaranteed, yeah. here we have 1, we have 0, and this is the forbidden, forbidden area, yeah, we talked about this. Then we have somewhere a trigger level from 0 to 1, and we have somewhere a trigger level from 1 to 0. All right? So if the input is going up here, exactly at when we reach this trigger level, which can be different from element to element, we will switch to 1. This is the interpretation of our of our input yeah? and even if the input is slowly crawling uh, above this trigger level yeah? then the input is interpreted exactly at reaching this tag as one okay so the interpretation is according to trigger level yeah? so this was the symbol and interpretation according level. That's it. Huh? That's the static input. And now let's have a look at the dynamic input. Huh? Dynamic input. A dynamic input is an input which is always moving and is hard to hit. <laughs> no, a dynamic input is working a little bit different. Eh? So if we do have again this interpretation, let's say, eh? a dynamic input is looking at a certain steepness. Eh? So we have again here the one level. We have this xi here, yeah? and let's say we're doing it just like that, yeah? doing it just like that, we have a slowly crawling upwards. Yeah? What will be the reaction? The reaction will be nothing. Yeah? It's simply too slow. Yeah? The change is too slow. The, the trigger level looks at a certain steepness. So, here, needed slope to switch. 
Yeah. If something is not that not, not that fast, yeah, we will not switch. Yeah. If we have here, I don't know, whoop, and at this point in time we are reaching, like here, yeah, we will trigger here the input and say, oh, now it's fast enough, but only quite a short time. Yeah. This is X. That's how this is working. Yeah, We're looking at the steepness of the things. If the steepness has reached a certain level, we will switch. And afterwards, it's gone again. Yeah? So the symbol looking like that. Of course, we have also an input, yeah? and then we have a little triangle here, yeah? that we have here xi, and we have here interpreted x. Yeah? That's it. That's the symbol. And Triggered by change readership. In reality, it's just you know a short impulse whenever we switch from zero to one. Yeah, there are also there are also uh, dynamic inputs there which trigger when we switch from from uh, one to zero, and their symbol is like that. All right. I will draw them next to each other. Dynamic input. And here we have a node. Yeah. This is triggered by positive edge. So from 0 to 1. And this is triggered. A negative edge from one to zero, and we can easily have um, elements where we have both type of inputs. So, for instance, there is an end element. with one static input and one dynamic input. So here we have the output. Whenever the static input is one and we have a, a rising edge at the dynamic input, yeah, here will be a short right? And the short, the short impulse, is impulse, yeah, uh, can be used to switch to switch a memory, one bit memory. We talked about one bit memories last time. Yeah? So here we have a one bit memory afterwards, for instance. And this short pulse of this and, 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 <laughs> and yeah, can trigger a set, for instance. Yeah? Then we do the same with the R line. That we are using one dynamic input, one static input. And if we switch those things together, then we have here a S line. We have an R line and with a signal called clock C, yeah, we can exactly determine the moment in time when this will be stored. So I can prepare already S and R's and with the clock line, poof, it will be stored. Yeah? So now look, now. Yeah? 
And the clock is usually periodically. And every time the clock is having a rising edge, it will be stored. That's it. This thing has even has even a symbol, a own symbol looking like that. We have here S R So it has an own symbol. Huh? Edge triggered. Edge triggered memory. People also call them flip flops. Huh? Edge triggered flip flops. What a flip flop exactly is, we will see. Huh? But this is an edge triggered memory. You could also come to the idea that we're using only, only static inputs static ends and use afterwards the memory so that we make it like this and s r q not q yeah that we have here the s line we have here the r line and here we are not using sta uh, dynamic inputs we are using uh uh Static inputs, yeah. Then we have here an S with an R, and this in the middle is then called T line, yeah, from a timer. Then this T line, whenever the T line is ha having a high level, all right, we can store. And when it's it's just like a gate, yeah? like a gatekeeper, right? this T line. Here we are storing exactly when this is rising, yeah. So Whenever C changes from zero to one, this is triggers storing. Trigger storing of S and R. Whatever S and R indicates here exactly at this. Yeah. And here we would have it like that, yeah, that if we're looking at, if we're looking T, yeah, and this is the time when S and R can store. Yeah. So here it's a certain point in time, and here it's a time period when I can store. This here has also a, a symbol looking like that. Own symbol. That we have here S, R, Q, not Q. Here we have S, R and T lines just drawn in. Uh, S, so that's this is as edge triggered and this is state triggered. Yeah. Dynamic inputs. <sighs> this is how this is working. Yeah. They are pretty important, especially when it comes to, to the logic which is controlled by some sort of clock. And so now do something, now do something, now do something. Then those dynamic inputs, they really come into, into action. All right. Next time we do a special trick with this type of, of, of memory. Yeah, we try to switch them somehow and then we will analyze the behavior yeah, of this. Then we'll see next time we're talking about flip-flops. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.